Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Um, my name is Colleen Kenny. I'm with Utah Family Voices at the Utah Parent Center, and we are super excited to have our guest here from Shoot the Moon. Um, he's been a professional artist for 40 years. He also graduated from the Art Center um, College of Design in Pasadena, California. After that, he worked for Hallmark for over 12 years, making thousands of images for them. Um, he's also created art for galleries and for collectors. Um, he became a high school art teacher where he was introduced to the diversibility needs of a lot of his students. And that's what drove him to imagine up, shoot the moon or jump the moon. I apologize, jump the moon, which he's been running for about four years now. Is that correct? Correct. Awesome. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn Thank it over you. to you. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining us wherever you are. And thank you, the people here in the room that uh, are come to have some fun and make some art together. Um, I want to also introduce Colton, if you'll come up here and watch that chord. This is Colton Thompson, and he and I have worked together on several uh, art projects over the last few years, and I'm so fortunate that he could be here to kind of be my assistant. So at times, you'll be seeing Colton, and I wanted to introduce him to you as well. So I'll let you know when we're ready to go some stuff, but um, I wanted to just uh, maybe start out by telling you how I got interested in this thing that we do. And if you've never heard of Jump the Moon, we are in Logan, Utah. We are an art studio for people with diverse abilities. The reason I use the word diverse abilities is because I myself grew up with learning disabilities and I've just never liked that word. It's okay if people like it and use it, but I never felt like I was disabled. I always felt like my mind worked, but just in a different way, in a highly creative way. So I call it diverse abilities. And I think every one of us has some sort of diverse ability, something we do that is different and unique and something that makes us who we are. And we love to find uh, the um, kind of ability to use art at our studio to do a few things. We, uh, we found that you can improve communication skills and that especially important is the need for every person on this planet has a need to express themselves, to, to let the world know who they are and what they think and what they like and what they're interested in. That ability to express yourself often um, is not possible verbally or maybe uh, the way I'm using hand gestures, maybe physically it's not as possible. But if we can find a way to use art for people to express themselves, I feel that that really makes a difference. And so I wanted to share some ideas with you today on how you can approach that in some kind of unique and interesting ways. And so we're going to be making some art as we go through here, uh, the people in the studio have in front of them a little bag, and I'm going to borrow one here. Um, I brought this because it's also an idea that I'd like to share. You'll see in the little bag here, um, I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but there is a picture here. Mine happens to have a hot air balloon in it. Um, there's an amazing cat over here. We've got Winnie the Pooh over here. Can I borrow your Winnie the Pooh? Can you pull it out of there and I'll, I'll show it? These were made, um, on the back there's a sticker that says, this drawing uh, was drawn for you by somebody in Cache Valley who cares. And uh, sometimes people have written their name on the back as well. Uh, the Winnie the Pooh, the little hot air balloon. But when we've had groups of school kids who have come to our studio to learn more about us on a field trip, I often have them make a little piece of artwork um, 
to give it to somebody else as a as a gift, just as a way a way to say somebody's thinking about you. Somebody somebody wanted to make you something. So that's where these came from. So somewhere in Cache Valley, there's probably a school a school child who made this drawing. The idea I would like to maybe have you take and try is to um, work with your own family, make these little images, these little art pieces, and then find somebody to go give them to. And they could be somebody you need to thank. It could be somebody who just needs to know you're thinking about them. But start making art and sharing it with other people. And the tools and things that we'll try today, maybe that's a good purpose for them, just to make things you can share with others. Uh, so these little art kits were created to go to your friends and uh, make your own and take them some, some uh, art tools and see if they'll make you a piece of art and start sharing that. It's a great way to share and make friendship stronger. I need to tell you just a little bit about how I got interested in this, in this area. Um, as a high school teacher, I had quite a few um, special needs students in my art class. My art class was a room about this size, made for maybe 20, 25 people. Often I would have 40 students and um, I insisted that all of the special needs students be in the art classes as well. So it was a crowded place. By the time we brought in a few wheelchairs and, um, and mentors or assistants or whatever, pretty crowded place. And we started having fun and I could tell that art would make a huge difference. Uh, the frustration was I didn't have enough space or enough time to really explore. By the time I got around to every student, I maybe only had one or two minutes with each one. And that was a little frustrating. So what I started doing was on my break hour and during lunch, we started bringing in some of the students who had some extra interesting uh, abilities or challenges. And uh, one day through the art door came a young lady, beautiful young lady. Uh, I found out her name was Abby. She was interesting right away. The first thing I noticed is it took three peer tutors holding on to a belt, a loop on each side and one in the back to kind of guide Abby into the classroom. And I introduced myself, I'm Michael, I'm the art teacher. We're gonna make some art together. And Abby sat down at our art table and I handed her a marker and she looked at it and she threw it. And I handed her a pencil and she threw that. And I handed her a paintbrush and that got thrown. Everything I handed her, she would look at it and throw. And in my mind, I thought, okay, challenge accepted. We, uh, we're gonna have to find something other than holding a marker or a paintbrush if this is gonna work. And I pulled out my trusty toy box, actually this very toy box, which I don't ever have too far from me. And I put it in front of Abby and she started looking through stuff and kind of throwing stuff out. And she got to, which I don't have one exactly like the one she picked out, but she picked out a toy truck. And she took that toy truck and she started driving on the table, zoom, 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 and making fun noises and like really enjoying that toy truck. And it really instantly occurred to me, if I could attach markers or pencils to that toy truck, then it could be drawn with. Then she would be drawing with all that movement. She'll hold on to this, but not a pencil or a marker. So I ran up and I drilled some holes in it and, so that I could stick some markers through it and ran back down uh, to the art room. And without too much time, we Abby was drawing and making beautiful, uh, beautiful drawings. Um, so I wanted to show you how to make some sort of a, a device or a thing that can be uh, maybe something interesting that somebody will draw with at your house. And it might just be, I'm gonna throw out quite a few ideas here, 
but it might just be that the tool that they need to draw with or paint with is just something new, something different. And so um, I'm going to get a volunteer helper here. Tell me your name. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. Brandon? Okay, Brandon, can you help me with something? If I gave you this toy box, can you find something in here that you like? Can you look in there and find something you like? Here, this is going to close, so I'm going to have mom help. All right. So this is one approach um, is to present, and I'm not going to refer to um, your family or your children as like your children. Maybe, maybe we're also working with some adults in the family that need a little help too. Um, so I'm going to refer to them as the artists. And so in your house, you have some artists. And we're going to see what we can do to give those artists some tools that will really help them. Brandon, did you find something you like? And oh, awesome. the Pooh. And Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Look at that. There's a theme. Brandon happened to have a Winnie the Pooh drawing made by somebody in Cache Valley for him. And he picked out a Winnie the Pooh block. So we are going to turn this block into something that Brandon can draw with. All right, does that sound okay? You're gonna need a few basic tools. Um, a drill is good to have. Uh, I like to have a block of wood, something so that I'm not drilling holes into the nice table. Um, a few drill bits and the most important ones, I'll show you really quickly are the size of these washable markers. Uh, you can also, uh, permanent markers are also just a little different size. I really like to use the washable ones because for obvious reasons, they're easy to clean up. So I have a marker that's the size of the big, the big ones and I threw my little one. <laughs> Let me find another one. Um, let me find one in here. And then uh, a drill bit about the size, just a little bit smaller than um, a different <laughs> marker. So Brandon, I'm going to make you a little art tool, and then we're going to get some paper over here, and I'd like you to test it out, see if it works, okay? Okay. Will that be all right? And we don't want to drill through Winnie the Pooh, so we're going to leave him on that side. And I need my um, couple drill bits here. One of them, when you go to drill a hole through a plastic toy, or this is kind of a rubber thing, it's really good to start with a smaller bit than you need just to get a pilot hole started. And so I'm gonna do, we're gonna put a couple markers in here because why just draw with one? and you can draw with multiple markers. All right, I've got my pilot holes and I'm gonna drill now a little bigger one and we'll put some markers in there and get some paper and see what we come up with. I don't know if I've ever drilled this rubbery stuff before, but it seems to be working. Don't let the fact that you've never really tried that before get in your way. I've always, I always love that. In fact, if there's something I've never tried before, I get extra excited about it. So Brandon, thank you for picking out this particular block because it's giving me a, a something I've never worked with. Brandon, do you have any favorite colors? Mm -hmm. Like red, blue? No, no, no. Little, I'm going to let you pick out some colors. I'm going to pour out. Are there any of the smaller markers in here? Oh, yellow one, right? Oh, yellow's good. Do you like any these, Do you want to try a yellow? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I have a smaller yellow. Let's try that one. I might need a bigger hole for that. <laughs> it says yellow, but it's got a blue bottom. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Is this one that one? Yellow? No. That's wow, funny. these are surprise markers. All of my yellow markers <laughs> got something. There's a there. yellow. There. 
and I think I need a bigger marker. So Brandon picked out a little thicker marker than the hole that I drilled. So we're gonna make one hole for that. Find two more of the skinny markers that you like. I should give a few safety tips along the way here. It just occurred to me. So that catches up to me eventually. If I'm drilling stuff, I really like to have, I got to let my, my brain catch up to my actions here. I really like to have a pair of gloves. Um, those to me are one of the best safety things too. If you don't wear glasses like I do, you should also find yourself some glasses, some eye protection. And if, um, if something feels awkward, like, like this doesn't feel like it's going to get away from me. But if I have something that feels a little sketchy, uh, using, um, using like a clamp to clamp it down onto the table or your board, um, using another person to, um, to kind of help out is a good idea. So I'll kind of take a breath here. So make sure that your working environment and your tools and that you're kind of familiar with them, that you, if you don't know, especially on a power tool, um, what it does or how to use it, find somebody who knows that, who can give you some pointers, who can give you some tips. And then we forgot something else. Uh, when we begin making art and creating things, I like to have uh, an apron. This has got some of your favorite color in there, Brandon. There's some yellow in there. I don't feel quite like a, a maker or an artist until I get my apron on. And when artists come to our studio in Logan, that's the first thing we do. We go get an apron and we <laughs> step from regular activity, which might be school, it might be uh, being at home, you know, doing what, playing games or whatever. We're stepping into the studio to make art and to create and to really develop our creativity, our imagination and our art ability. And the apron for me um, really helps that. It's kind of a symbol of, okay, I'm ready to make something. So now I've already started making something and I just need one bigger hole in this and we're gonna test it out. Okay. And while Brandon tests out this, we're gonna make a few other things and have some of our other uh, studio uh, guests uh, help out as well. All right, bigger hole should let this yellow marker go through. You want to keep the lids nearby. So there's one. Did you pick out some smaller markers, Brandon? We're going to leave the purple's my favorite color, too. It's mine. Pick out one more here. Is that okay? Yeah. We need three. Brandon picked out my favorite color, purple, which happens to be the most favorite color of creative people. Did you know that? Anybody know the most favorite color of most people on the planet? It's there's a there's a color that most people prefer. The majority prefers. Do you know anybody know what it is? Blue. 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 Yeah, blue is the most often preferred color. But when you run into somebody whose favorite color is purple, there's a pretty high chance you may have just met an artist or a creative person. All right, tripod or three is good on these. So I'm hoping that as I kind of stumble through a bunch of this stuff, that you get the idea that you could probably go to the toy box, or in a second I'll show you the kitchen drawer is a great source, or to Desert Industries or a thrift store or a garage sale or the dollar store, and you can probably make some really interesting tools. If you have three, then one of those points is always touching. Um, if you have four, then there's probably one that's not going to touch the paper. So Brandon, we now have an art making tool that you've made. 
Oh, can I show one other thing here? I put out for for our artists here in the studio just a piece of mat board. It could be a piece of cardboard, it could be a piece of poster board or whatever. It's a good idea. Most of you'll be working from home on your kitchen table or on some place where you probably don't want the markers, especially if we get into some permanent markers or something on stuff. So a work surface, uh, and this can be drawn on, it can be tested on, like we can test it out and see if it's gonna work. Looks like we're gonna work okay. And then take your paper, Brandon, and put it on top of there, and take that and see on the block and see if you can make a cool drawing for us on there. All right, and while he's doing that, while, while Brandon is um, investigating that, um, I'm gonna talk about a couple other tools. Actually, I pulled out this little school bus, which is one that I've been wanting to make something out of. So maybe we'll just do that while we're at it and get somebody else try that one out. Are you done already? Do you want to show everyone? Can we show up? Oh, wait, we're not quite done. There's one other thing. Well, almost done. All artists, almost they done. sign their name or they make their it. mark when they're done with their art. So can you take a marker, a marker and, and put your name on there? You could write it with the tool that we made for you right yeah, here. That's very creative. Very nice. Well done. And it might, it might show up. Let's see. I don't know if the, I don't know where to go. Can I come back over here? Are we good? So Brandon has included his name on here. It's yellow, so it's nice and bright, but it's a little hard to see maybe on the camera. And then Brandon has made a very interesting little drawing. And what does it remind you of? Brandon, does this drawing remind you of anything? What did you draw? Brain doing. Brandon, oh. is that you? Yeah, that's your name. Self-portrait? Self what does this thing remind you of? One of our first ones said a tornado. Oh, a tornado. That's what I thought, too. Tornado. Yeah. Uh -huh. It does kind of look like a tornado. It doesn't mean it has to be a tornado, but it's a great conversation to start. What is that? It reminds me of, it also reminds me of somebody with very curly hair, which is not me. I don't have... <laughs> I barely have any hair, let alone like that. Now, Colton over here, his hair can get a little more curly like that. But having a piece of artwork created by somebody's hand, Brandon's hand made this, could be a great way to start a conversation. It can also be a great way to start a story and to add and to build on. So if there was a tornado, and if whatever we decide these yellow marks kind of maybe to me look like lightning, we can start to imagine a scene which then we can start a story and we can just keep adding to that story. What happened in that tornado? What happened because the lightning? What happened because of the other things that we see in there? Maybe this little mark down here looks to me like a penguin a little bit. But we could just get a start, start a story and share that. Brandon, I'm gonna leave that with you and we're gonna draw some. If you wanna add more to it, you sure can. Um, let's make another device here. And um, I hope somebody's watching the clock for me <laughs> because I get rolling and I completely lose track of time. Does that happen to you guys? Halfway through. Already? Oh, I brought enough stuff we can stay for five hours, but I know we only have an hour. So, so we're going to move right along. Actually, maybe I won't make this. There's so much I want to share with you um, just on this idea of making tools, adapting them so you can draw with something other than just a marker, a paintbrush, or a crayon. A lot of people have grasping issues, and that's very difficult for some people to get a hold of something. So I want to share some ideas um, that, uh, that might help with that. One of the things that I really love are things that wiggle and shake and uh, that you can do all kinds of fun stuff with. 
um, they'll make an interesting mark. So if we attach drawing things to this, or maybe they'll fit in it, I know here's something you're going to need. Uh, this is white, but it's duct tape. And it is the best tool ever for making adaptive art stuff because you can tear this in strips. You can fasten one thing to another pretty quickly um, and pretty easily. Let's just see what we can come up with here. Tear that into some strips. I like to take it and tear it into some thin strips, which are much easier to, to work with. Brandon, can you pick me out a few more colors? I need like, just pick me out some more markers to go with this. No, no, no! Not black? Here, you pick out some. No! Okay, can I do it myself? Can I take this back and do it myself? Okay, no problem. I'm going to take a few markers and uncap them on here, get them maybe a pink one in there. I'm just, anything where things kind of stick in and will hold together, you can take some duct tape and start wrapping that around. And Colton, I might give this one to you to experiment with. Um, Again, three is a great number. Um, it just is, it's a tripod. It will hold together pretty well. So I got three markers in here on this thing that shakes, right? And I've had people tell me before, I can't be an artist because my hands shake. I tell them that's actually an unfair advantage because a shaky line is way more interesting than a straight line. <laughs> like you have been given an unfair advantage because your hand shakes. My hands don't shake very much, so I'm gonna create a device that does shake. And we'll get Colton to start drawing with this a little bit, see what he can do with it. Let's say that uh, your artist at home can't just grab that and work with that. There are all kinds of things. I don't even know what this was. Oh, it says Nerf on it, but I don't know. I don't know. What is it? it? I think it had a longer thing on it. I don't know. It doesn't matter really what it was. It's when you look at things in a thrift store or a garage sale, I want you to start imagining what it can be. And I imagine when I saw this, I've got some artist who can't grasp anything. Their hands don't work, but they can move their arm. And I thought, if we do this, and if we wrap a Velcro strap around that, then this could hold something and they could work with it. And this actually happens to fit that. I could put that in there. We could strap this or somebody could get a hold of it. Put a Vel Velcro straps are great. Um, and all of a sudden we have something that if somebody can just move their arm, not only can they draw with that, but because it's wiggly and shaky, it's gonna make a pretty interesting drawing. So Colton, I'm gonna give this to you. Uh, get some paper on top of your work surface there and we'll come back to you. Just see what kind of interesting marks you can make with that. Other things that to look for, uh, if you go to the thrift store in the um, kitchen stuff, a lot of things you find something with holes that markers or whatever will just automatically fit through. It may need to be adjusted so that um, the hole's a little bigger. So I'm going to put some different size holes in here. Let's see, let's go a little closer. That tears that up pretty good, but I bet my mark will stick through there now. And these little ones are great. They're called pip squeaks. Oh, that one's dead. Let's find another one here. Somebody else want to test this one out for us and just see what you can draw? This is just something that's a little easier to hold. Anytime you can get more than one 
Um, and there's paper underneath there too. Check it out. If you can get more than one um, marker going at once, then even a little bit of movement creates something pretty interesting. In fact, let me show you something I found, and you might be able to find things that are similar. Here's another great resource. If you have a college in your area, uh, University of Utah, we live near Utah State, uh, Weber, I'm betting that they all have a surplus area, which is when the college doesn't need stuff anymore, they send it to surplus and it's sold really cheap. I don't know what I paid for these. They're from a chemistry lab and they're meant to have um, test tubes in them or something. But they happen to hold markers really well. And the markers just poke through these little slots on the bottom. So I'm going to give somebody, can somebody test this out first? Can I give to you? Um, the thin markers might work even better. Take some markers and we'll put that on your paper there. Just start dropping them through. And then um, what happens with that, I have another one here somewhere. What happens with that is if even somebody can just bump it. If somebody can bump it with their elbow, if somebody can bump it with their foot and it's on the floor um, and you have, you know, with these you can put potentially 30 markers in there. One little bump of that thing is going to make a lot of lines. It's going to make a big drawing. And so anything we can do to make big drawings, uh, very active drawings with little effort is great. Um, I've been saving this little giraffe. I thought markers, uh, holes drilled in the ends of those, and markers in the legs would be something really fun to draw with. The possibilities are really endless. In fact, this morning I looked in my own recycle bin, and there's just an empty bottle, which would be great to drill holes through and give a different thing to hold on to. Or maybe the markers can be put stacked inside until they're in there tight and you could draw with that way. Colton, you got a drawing with that thing? Kind of looks like fireworks, but... Fireworks, awesome. Like right it does look like fireworks. So here's the tool and Colton just made a very interesting drawing. Also, I should probably talk about just a little bit. The goal is to make interesting art. My goal as an artist for 40 years is to make something that is interesting so that people will notice it. They're not going to just walk by it and not even notice it. Um, it doesn't matter that uh, your art be recognizable as a thing. Uh, in fact, I bet Colton, if he looks hard enough in there, can probably find some faces or things in this drawing that he created. You want to give that a try? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for one right, right now, and I'll point one out. Oh, here's one right here. I don't know if it will show up on our screen. Let me grab a, um, a blue marker and highlight it. There is what looks like a bunny rabbit in this drawing. And I'm going to kind of highlight it here. So there's one ear. There's two eyes. How much can you zoom in? Is that? If I hold it there, can you see that bunny rabbit right there? See the ears and the eyes and the nose? This is a really fun game. It's one that we've played with our kids. My wife Susie is here today too. Um, we've played this game with forever with our, our seven kids, uh, which is make a scribble and then turn it into something, find something in it. Colton has made a whole encyclopedia of scribbles here. Um, actually, nobody will know what an encyclopedia is, will they? I'm old. I know this stuff. We did that to keep them quiet during church. We did that to keep them quiet during church. It's true. <laughs> but it worked great. Do you see that bunny rabbit in there? Yeah. Uh, take the blue marker. See if you can find something anywhere else, anything, anything you want. All right. Are there, I should have asked this before we started, do people that are uh, listening at home, 
do they have the ability to ask a question or does any of you have anything you'd like me to talk about? Now I've already used a lot of our time, but um, any special um, like um, challenges that you have that maybe I can share some ideas with, I'd love to share what you need. Um, and I'll just keep showing things. I wanna to jump to another idea, uh, but send in the questions or if you have one here, let me know. In your studio, do you guys also do like pottery and um, other arts besides um, the art? Yeah, the question or, is, do we do uh, pottery? We do uh, sculpting. Uh, with clay. Um, we didn't have the space to do pottery wheels and a kiln and all that. I would love to have that sort of ability in the future. Uh, we actually right now are homeless. Our building, we just leased it, but it was sold. And so we've, uh, everything's in a storage unit and we're looking for a new home. But, um, but when I finally find a, a new place, the ability to do ceramics and pottery are great. I would also love to expand into music and dance, motion, um, and get beyond just the visual arts. Any of the arts, uh, theater, uh, performance, dance, music, all of those things are great forms of expression and let somebody really communicate who they are to the world. And so I'm all about anything that does that. Did you find anything in your drawing? Oh, I did. Um, I found like a flower. Do you want to come up and show it here? Sure. Watch our cord there. So, let's see. You see Welcome that? to you. Oh, good. I didn't even look behind me. You guys are So if you can see stuff. that, um, it's kind of like a Nintendo character, kind of like oh, yeah. a smiley face-ish guy. But, awesome. Yeah, I think so. And so this too is an opportunity. It's a springboard for so many things. Um, do you like that character? Is that a character you've uh, used in games and stuff before? Is that how um, you know it? Not the exact character, but it looks like an internal character. Okay. Sure. And you know something about that character, like what its uh, superpowers are or what its abilities are? or. Um, Looks like it would shoot out flames. <laughs> okay, <laughs> flame throwing character, awesome. Um, use the, the scribbles and the drawings and, um, and sometimes they're not scribbles, sometimes they're awesome drawings of a cat or a dog. Use those as a springboard to start conversation, to find out some expression about the person who made it. So I'll let you keep that. Question. Yeah. Uh, do you also set paint brushes into adaptive? Absolutely. So I just brought markers because they are kind of a simple starting point. Um, depending on the the artist that you're working with in your home, you know them. Like for example, some of the stuff that we use um, is kind of heavy. Um, here, I'll take this for example. This is a garden rake. This shape is awesome for taping paint brushes and markers to, but if you happen to have an artist who occasionally likes to hit, this is probably not a good choice. So you have to know your artist and know that what's gonna be safe for them. And there's no one size fits all. It's all completely has to be kind of uh, adapted to what, uh, what your challenge or what your artist's ability is. So be sensitive to that sort of stuff. We've learned the hard way a couple times that maybe something was too big and if you get hit with it, it's not the most exciting moment, but um, actually it was pretty exciting, but not, not something you wanna have happen. Um, uh, advice I would have on this way of making tools is if possible, go to a thrift store, go to a garage sale with your artist and see what they are drawn to. Like put things in front of them and see what they gravitate to. If they are drawn to something, that is awesome. It's so much easier to make an art tool out of that thing than out of something I find that I think will be an interesting art tool 
but it turns out they don't have any interest in that thing. So uh, one other really great thing, I don't even know what this was. It says swimming legs and it cost me 75 cents. It's foam, it's basically foam rubber. Foam is great to drill holes. You drill them a little smaller. It's easy to slide pens, pencils, markers, paint brushes. And this happens to be a pretty interesting handle that might work on a lot of different levels. So um, I guess the message overall, I brought dozens and dozens of things, but start looking at the world differently. Start looking at all of the stuff that's out there and thinking, could that be an art making tool? <laughs> um, as you throw something in the recycle bin, a bottle or a container of some sort, the handles on a milk jug are awesome. If you cut off the handle, they're just the right size that a marker will slide into that hole and you have this great little handle that's easy to grip. We throw away, you know, how many of those every week. Um, we're throwing away a great art making tool. And it's so easy, a pair of scissors and a milk jug and you've got a great marker holder. Um, just start looking and and opening up your imagination to what could that thing be? That's all I do, really. As I'm exploring the world, I look at everything as what could that be? You know, most of it is headed to the landfill where it will never be seen again, except, you know, who knows when. But um, right now we can use it and make something useful out of it. And we're, we're on a bunch of different levels. Did you, was there a question? Yeah, there? well, a comment. Um, so as far as gripping, some of the adaptive art tools would also work great for functional things, like eating utensils, brushing teeth, or combing hair. Mm. Oh, that is an excellent point. And um, I didn't bring it, but I actually have what was intended to attach to a spoon and a fork, and I've switched it to hold a paintbrush. <laughs> But, but it can go the other way too. So if you come up with a great uh, tool, um, these potato mashers are awesome because that skinnier marker, which now that all disappeared, slides right down in these. Um, you can take this without any drilling or anything and slide a bunch of markers into a potato masher, run a piece of duct tape around it, and you've got a, a really unusual tool, or they can go this way. You know, very, most people will just see that as a potato masher. I saw that and went, wow, that has all kinds of uses as an art tool, or maybe something to help eat. And maybe we use a different end, uh, maybe with some padding on here and going through a hand like that. Maybe there, we're onto something else. Uh, be open to just being creative. Um, Four-year-olds are awesome at this. They will play with all kinds of stuff. Often the box is more interesting than whatever the gift was. And it becomes a fort and an airplane and a whatever and uh, a rocket to transport them to another place. If we could get as adults that sort of creative energy back and it's still inside of you. Um, it hasn't disappeared, but it probably got put in a closet somewhere. And the idea that we have to act more mature and we have to be more responsible and more logical and we really should stop playing with things so much happens to most people. I'm fortunate in that somehow I've always resisted that. And I play, that's all I do, I just play. And I look at things and I find a new use for them. Let me pass on a couple more tips because I think we only have a few more minutes. So this whole tip is make, um, make things that will hold your markers and pens and paintbrushes that your artist wants to hold on to and wants to move around or make things, oh, how's our drawing with our, can I show that? Sure. Oh, you're, oh, you're embellishing. Tell me your name. Raquel. Raquel. Okay, we've got Raquel here. And already something amazing is happening and interesting here. 
this and did you notice that pushing this around didn't take much effort right it's got a bunch of markers sticking in it and even just bumping it will do something interesting she happened to do this cool loopy loop and has already seen other images inside that and you're off on a little creative journey and this piece of artwork was born today this did not exist before you just created it and that's another thing I love about when when any artwork is made. Brandon, can I show yours again? When Brandon made this, this drawing that could be a tornado, it could be curly hair, could be a broom, could be who knows what. Maybe that's a witch's broom now. Who knows what this could be? It doesn't have to be anything. It can just be a scribble too. But the point is, that did not exist. This did not exist. Colton's drawing, which is amazing, did not exist. They were born today in this room, and they add something interesting and beautiful to the world that we live in. And they are a sign that some living person who is important and has something important inside of them to share made that thing. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing when that happens. I just, I love it. There you go, Brandon. Here you go. Thank you. Did you say Raquel? Raquel. Raquel. Okay, Raquel. So try this at home. Um, I'll give you something super easy. And I went off all the stuff I brought. I brought the most basic. You probably have a coat hanger at home. And anything that you can draw the next step, and we'll have to come back and do more. I hope I get invited back. Is, um, is take a coat hanger and use it with a marker or a crayon or whatever on paper and draw that shape inside. If somebody has a bit of a challenge, it kind of fences in their drawing. What else do I have that could work that way? Sorry, I got all this stuff. So here's uh, some sort of a knitting hoop. They're great because they're easy to hold on to. If I create my drawing device, here's oh, one that I had already and I put it inside there, turn it this way, put it inside there, it's going to make a circle. No matter what, we're gonna end up with a circle, but it'll be a unique circle, it'll be something different. The same thing works inside a coat hanger. Coat hangers come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, somewhere I have like a triangle that's used on a pool table. Um, any shapes that you can use to contain your drawing tool and then move it and do another circle and another circle and just keep overlapping them. Before long, the repetition of pattern, which is an art principle um, that is used to make very strong art, is being used and the, the, uh, the art is gonna turn out amazing. Um, so, and that might be, we're like five minutes left, right? Is there any questions here We've just got a few minutes that you'd like me to address. Yeah. We have another one of our staff people at home commented that many families do not know that their children can, and they all tend to respond with they can't. So this creativity helps open minds to understand that individuals can. And if you didn't hear that, um, the idea that somebody can't, um, is going to make me emotional because I I don't believe it. In fact, I get kind of excited, kind of giddy, when somebody comes into our studio or I meet somebody on the street and I say, I've never met your son or daughter before. Um, we have this studio. Let's make some art together. And I hear that often is, well, my son is blind, and so he can't be an artist or my daughter has no use of anything but her eyes. She can just move her eyes. So she can't be an artist. And I accept that as a good challenge. I, in my head, I say, I bet we can prove you wrong because I bet we can find a way to make art with your son or daughter. And we have made beautiful art with artists who can only move their eyes. It's taken a while and it's a challenge, but we figured it out often. There is no can't. If, you're, if your artist is alive, we can make art with them. Um, 
that's really the only requirement. And I just love sharing the, this is my soapbox, I guess, is that every person, every living person on this planet deserves the ability to express themselves. And they deserve a chance to make and create things. And sometimes it's stuff not found in an art store that is gonna make that possible. It just takes a little help and a little imagination. Uh, Colton that has helped me on some things and we've worked together has an awesome imagination and he sees the world differently than I do. And I love it when his ideas and my ideas kind of mix together and we create something beautiful together. It just, I believe Colton is gonna be one of the most amazing artists on the planet. And he's already showing that that's gonna be true. He has that in him. And everybody somewhere down inside has that in them. And we just, I just wanna help people unlock that. So if you feel like this is something useful, um, I'm more than happy to come and share and have enough to share for a lot of episodes where we could talk about this and, and find ways to make it happen in your own home. Um, I just wanna say again to the Parent Center how grateful I am for the invitation to come and be here. You do a beautiful thing for our state and I know there are thousands of families out there that have been benefited and affected by the love you have for people and the love you have for their artists. And, um, and I just, I applaud you and I, I love the idea that we could maybe do something together. So um, I, I, on that note, I don't have a sign off. I need a, like, I need a sign off, which is you are beautiful you are wonderful and you deserve a chance to express yourself. And so let's make that happen. Thank you so much and um, happy to share. Thank you all. Michael, thank you so much for coming. We definitely, there's lots of responses that we do want to have you back and that you can go to jumpthemoon.org to follow them and make sure. find out when they open up their studio again that we had some questions about that as well wanted to be able to find you when you open up again um and yeah we could really feel your passion and you've opened up my eyes to so many possibilities i will never look at my recycling bin the same again. Um, this is amazing. Cool. And we just wanted to mention to those of you guys online, there should be a poll going up. And if you could just take a few quick seconds and take that poll for us, it does help us a lot in being able to put on these workshops and having our, our amazing guests come. So thank you guys. Thanks for your help, Colton. Um, and yeah, we're excited to have some fun with some of these things that we've learned for yeah. our family members. I would also love it if you have a way to share pictures and images of the devices you've made and the artwork that was created. I love seeing that. And uh, maybe we can even make a place uh, to share that on our website How too. How fun would that be? And okay. let the world see what amazing things are being created. I took some pictures of your guys' art. And so, yeah, we'll get some permissions for okay. to, to share those as well. This is just, the door is just cracked open and there's a whole universe to explore here. So thank you. Let's get into it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks again, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.